Uh, yeah, so I am a follower of Elon Musk on Twitter. Mm -hmm. His his recent shenanigans. Uh, this is coming to you viewers on May twenty third. So mm -hmm. probably, about, probably about a couple of weeks ago, he had a baby, which mm -hmm. is uh, I don't even know what the name is. <laughs> uh, somebody said it's pronounced like Kyle because. X is Kai in some type of alphabet. Uh, the AE is pronounced like AI, like I. He was on the Joe Rogan podcast. I'm pretty sure if you watch the Joe Rogan podcast or you just Google it, you can find out how to pronounce it or how he wants it pronounced. But that's besides the point. Um, SpaceX, one of Elon Musk's many companies, um, is partnering with NASA to launch two astronauts in the space and put them into the International Space Station, and those astronauts are Bob Benkin, I believe, and Doug Hurley, and so I think this is the very first manned uh, flight for SpaceX. So SpaceX has been putting up uh, their Starlink satellites for the global internet. Elon Musk is trying to provide, and they, they've been making a lot of missions. Um, one of the notable things about SpaceX is that their rockets, I think they were the first, I think they were the first, but they might have been second. But I'm like 95% sure they were first to make rockets be able to return to uh, the the surface the surface of the planet, so they can be reused, which okay. really really cuts down on the price of space travel. Because okay. usually it's just it's usually just one flight, and then boom, everything's dead, and you got to redo everything. But here they just they save the boosters, the things that actually fly into space, and they get to reuse them, update them, and that cuts it down. So. Um, them actually flying people to space for the first time is a historic thing for their company. Mm -hmm. And this uh, pretty much a historic thing for space travel in the United States in general, because usually, and I'm pretty sure everybody knows this, you know, NASA was the space organization for America. NASA flew people to the moon, NASA flew people in the orbit, NASA blah, 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 NASA blah, blah, blah. But this is the first time, oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I, I, just to quickly interject, I still think NASA, um, ex with the exception of the moon, I still think NASA still does some of the stuff you um, uh, mentioned. Yeah, yeah. Um, I know that their, uh, their budget was significantly cut, though. Yeah, so they, uh, unfortunately. Unfortunately, it was. Yeah. So by, by, a, by, by both administrations, not just one administration. I think it's by both administrations. So it's just, yeah, it's pretty unfortunate. Space travel is pretty, uh, pretty f important. Um, asteroid mining will be the future as soon as uh, that takes off as soon as that becomes like a thing that's that's when hopefully the whole game is going to change hopefully in our lifetimes yeah <laughs> yeah but um like i was saying this is the first time a commercial company is teaming up with a government organization to take people into orbit so like this may not be the last time this probably won't be the last time um and this is just like the start of something new so um it's pretty it's pretty interesting and I, 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 I applaud SpaceX. Um, I think I had a friend that worked there, or he interned there. And uh, challenging work, very innovative stuff, but um, nothing less to be expected from... Uh, from uh, Elon, the, the Iron Man of, of, uh, of, of, of this world, <laughs> I guess. Um, and, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm familiar with the... And we've talked about this. Uh, senior codes, uh, us and um, also with uh, Chengis as well, about the satellite link efforts that um, SpaceX is doing. And I believe Amazon's also doing something pretty similar. Uh, I think Amazon, not Blue Origin, the other company Jeff Bezos owns, um, they're doing something pretty um, similar. Now, I don't, I don't profess to know the idiosyncrasies of uh, um, transmitting data using satellite um i do i do know that you one of the current problems of using satellite for internet is that you know besides bandwidth issues you suffer from a high degree of latency given you know the, given how far the satellite is from um i guess the surface of the earth yeah about a day from what i understand about 370 millisecond latency which is um you know especially if you want to stream video watch video and stuff like that um, that's pretty bad. Other things, I guess, other non-intensive things like surfing the internet, um, 
I, I don't know what what typical users do. I guess you know what typical internet users do. I think sat our current satellite internet is sufficient. It covers a high. Um, it covers a, a large uh, geographic region. It's just that if you want to do something that's more video intensive, like um, using Skype or or watching Netflix, for example, and um, it's not something that's going to be worthwhile to use. I believe SpaceX, how they're trying to solve that latency issue, which is, you know, deals with how fast a signal propagates from a satellite to the surface of the Earth. That's, that's based on physical laws. It's like the speed of light, for example. Um, how they're solving that issue is twofold. They're, they're trying to have, bring satellites, you know, if you have if you have a high latency problem, you just make the satellites much closer to the surface of the Earth. So you have a low latency problem. It doesn't fix all the issues, but it does make. I think it does make possible to stream Netflix in like low in a low quality resolution, like 480 or I or something like that. Yeah. And the other thing is that because you're bringing satellites closer to the Earth, you need more satellites condensed in an area because a satellite that's higher in a higher position orbit can cover a lot a large geographic area uh, versus a satellite low um, geographic orbit has to only cover covers a much more narrow area. So right. you need to have a, a lot more satellites uh, so to cover more areas. And that then uh, raises some other problems like, you know, there's a huge problem, uh, senior codes, I'm not sure if you noticed, there's a huge problem right now with our current satellites uh, being destroyed by asteroids and stuff, creating more debris. And then when we launch new satellites, those those new satellites get um, gets hit by the, the existing satellite debris that has happened, which causes more debris and stuff. And at a certain point, we're gonna have that's gonna be problematic for us as a species going forward. Um, yeah, there was a there's like a law of uh, I'm not sure if Chung has brought this up, but <laughs> there is a law that some scientists came up with and just said, okay, once you have one thing in space and it's destroyed, it creates debris. And then once that debris hits other things, that creates debris. And then that grows, I'm not sure if it's exponentially, but very fast. And just, just having two machines in, the, in, in orbit, mm -hmm. if they're both destroyed, then they can create a lot of debris, which can destroy potential, you know, a lot of, potentially a lot of machines. So. Yeah, and I, I don't know if uh, SpaceX is considering that problem. Certainly having satellites much closer to the Earth could... I think presents some problems, especially dealing with debris. It's, it, could, it will solve some. It will solve some problems with the internet, but it could also present other problems with, um, you know, asteroids and etc. You know, so I'm not sure if they're considering that um, that particular issue. Um, but you know, it's a. It's a, I do commend Elon uh, for at least trying to get this up, up and running. And then with the other space travel issue. As well, you know, I, I don't think that's something that's going to happen in our lifetime, especially if, if you don't have a lot of money. Because, uh, you know, space travel, even now in modern times, it is still pretty expensive for most people, uh, except for if you're a millionaire or maybe a billionaire. But I think I still, you know, commend him for, for thinking outside the box and trying to go uh, explore the galaxy. You know, let's not be constrained to our to Earth. Let's do Let's see what the universe has to offer. So hopefully within the next, you know, million years or so, we'll, we'll you know, colonize the entire galaxy, assuming we live that long. Yeah, that's, that's interesting. I think, uh, I mean, his, his, uh, his most notable quote is that he wants to think about the future and not be sad. So, mm -hmm. I mean, like, that's, a, that's kind of, like, obvious. People would, don't want to be that sad about the future, but... He was saying that uh, a future where all of humanity is shot on Earth and we never go anywhere but Earth, that's mm -hmm. pretty sad. But a future where we become a multi-planet species, where we're on Earth, Mars, and then we eventually venture out, out of our solar system uh, because we have the technology. He said, that's, he said that's interesting. You know, I, I commend the guy, like you said. He, he, does, he does have some stuff. Uh, you know, and this partnership with NASA is just like, um, just proof, I mean, uh, that things are going in the right direction. Uh, global internet for everybody is great. More, uh, more U.S. astronauts in the ISS is great. Um, so, you know, we'll have to see. We'll, 
we'll have to see what the man Elon comes up with in the, in the future episodes. <laughs>